Hello everyone from St. Paul's and anyone else who stops by for this midweek message. I cannot believe that it's already the last day in September. What a wonderful fall we've had and I'm sure the farmers are grateful as well. We have a number of announcements again today. We have now had two indoor in-person services and I believe that things have gone well. Our environment for these services continues to be very controlled and as safe as we can make it. All Alberta Health Service guidelines continue to need to be met. That means you need to come with a mask on and not take it off until you return to your vehicle. The exception is for when you receive communion. You will be screened with questions about your health and contacts just like in many other places when you arrive. This will happen just inside the doors. You will need to wait outside six feet apart until it's your turn. We ask that you come anytime between 9.30 and 10 a.m. to allow for a staggered entry. This is completely unscheduled and we're finding it's working out very well. The only doors available for you to come in will be the back side doors. This also allows for elevator access if you need that. You will need to use hand sanitizer on your way in and as you leave and before communion as well. Please know that you will likely not be able to sit in your favorite seat. You will be ushered in in the order that you arrive so that we can seat people in the safest way possible. The two front portions of the balcony will be reserved for families with young children. This will allow the children to move about some while yet remaining in their bubble. When you call in to register, please indicate if you would like one of these spaces. About communion, we would like to ask you to bring your own bread and wine or grape juice if you choose. This means there is less movement in the sanctuary and that's always safer. If you forget bread at home, you can receive bread to use during communion upon your arrival. Then at communion, we'll all receive the bread and or the wine at the same time. You will need to register with the church office by 4 p.m. on Friday. That number is 780-988-5446. If there are spaces available after Friday at 4 p.m., we will send out, or Tammy will send out, a constant contact email to let you know at that time that there are spaces available and the spaces are available to anyone, including those who came the previous week. We'd sooner have you here than an empty church. We will continue to record the service and have it available for those not worshiping with us in person. This is new for all of us. We're still learning. We ask for your patience as we figure it out. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to contact myself or Jen Madhu. We do continue to have difficulty with our church phone. It is being looked into. Please, if you can't get through on your first call, try and leave a message. If it won't allow you to do that, please try calling back again. Sometimes the phones don't even ring when you call in, or they'll only ring in one person's office and not in Tara's, and she's running around trying to figure out where the system will let her pick up the phone. Again, we ask for your patience. You can contact me on the church cell phone if you have tried and cannot reach the church office. We will continue with the second in a two-part intergenerational event on creation this Sunday afternoon at 1.30 p.m. You may join in the second event even if you didn't come to the first. It's one hour in length. Please again, if you're able to let Tammy know if you're able to come because it does help us in our planning. Anytime now, 
If you are able to bring items for our Thanksgiving display, please bring them. We invite you to do this. And if you could have your donations for the display here by no later than a week from today, that's Wednesday, October the 7th. If you have a large number or heavy items that you'd like to drop off, please contact the church office first and Tara can meet you at the church to let you in. If you have a smaller number or amount, you can just drop them off at the hub on the house, that's the house on the church property, and we will bring them over to the church for you. What are we looking for? Any kind of harvest. Pumpkins, squash, apples, kales, red beets, carrots, leaves, anything along these lines are appreciated. Some years we leave the display up till the end of October, but this year we'll just have it up the one week. So you are welcome to take the items home with you again after the Thanksgiving service or services. We're not sure yet if there will be one or two services. It depends on how many of you would like to come in person. So please, if you'd like to come, contact the church office as soon as possible to come. Many thanks in advance. On Festival Sundays, we'd like to be able to accommodate anyone who would like to come. So our hope is to offer two services, if needed, for Thanksgiving, and the same for All Saints Sunday on November 1st, when we remember those who have passed away, particularly in the last year, but at any time. Sunday, October 28th, there will only be an online worship service. Tammy and I will be away on one week's worth of vacation. Canadian Lutheran World Relief has prepared a unique service that uh, we will have ready for you and you will be able to view it from your homes on that Sunday at 10 a.m. Now I would like to invite you to light your candle. This week's devotion continues along the theme of the season of creation and it's written by the Archbishop Linda Nichols of the Anglican Church of Canada. And the Bible passage is from last Sunday's reading, Exodus 17, verse 6. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. She writes, as an early settler Canadian, I'm accustomed to the ready availability of fresh, clean water at any moment on any day. I've also lived in the Himalayas of India, where the provision of water was unpredictable day to day and what was available had to be boiled thoroughly first because it was not safe to drink. Like the Israelites in the desert, I readily grumbled and complained when it was not available. This became a lesson for me in the dangers of the privileges that I had enjoyed and took for granted in Canada. I became acutely aware that the lack of water was a daily reality for millions of people, and that clean water was even more scarce. I also became aware of those who profit from the bottling and selling of a resource that is a necessity of life and a gift of the Creator. The ongoing protection and sharing of clean water are part of our baptismal vocation to love neighbor as well as self and to safeguard the integrity of God's creation and respect, sustain, and renew the life of the earth. Just as Moses followed God's direction in order to offer water to the Israelites in the desert, 
we are called to partner with those protecting and sharing water. From joining the advocacy of Autumn Peltier, a young Indigenous water protector, to the relief efforts of the Red Cross, to our daily habits to conserve and protect water in our community, we are called to share in the provision of God's gift of water now and for future generations. And let us pray. Creator of all, stir in us the passion to share the living water of the gospel, as we also protect and share the waters of your creation to nourish all creatures. Amen. And she has chosen the hymn, Now the Green Blade Rises, to end this devotion, and so I invite you to listen to that now. <laughs> 